Hey guys, this is uh, Elliot Wave Sage. I want to go ahead and do a market update. Like always, none of this is financial advice. Always do what's best for you. Just use this for your education and entertainment purposes only. I've been uh, traveling a lot and uh, haven't been able to do any videos, but I try to use my Twitter as much as possible. Uh, the market is uh, really acted in a way that's making it uh, tough for uh, fundamental investors and um and technical analysts, Elliott Wave practitioners, not, not maybe not as tough um, it, as it as it may seem to be. But if you're in the other two groups of traders, um, you know, and I call the technical traders the PhD Mensa, the Mensa traders, and then you have the um, fundamental guys like the Kramers, and, and you know, looking for PE ratios and things like that. There was, and you know, they they watch, they study the news carefully. What's the Fed gonna do? What does the jobs numbers mean? So on and so on. So you get it's so confusing. The time is so confusing, and oh, all I really have to rely on is kind of the Elliott Wave uh, situation, um, because you can't really rely on anything else. Because as you saw, eighty, we had the jobs report come out, and it was four hundred, you know, something job, four hundred thousand jobs added. Everyone freaks out, and then oh no, wait, it's actually two hundred thousand because a different um, you know, agency produces this report and maybe it's not as good. And so you're like back and forth and traders are confused and then some news just drops out of nowhere that a whole new gold backed currency um, is coming out from the BRIC nations that um, you know, will we'll definitely weaken the dollar, will definitely put pressure downward on the dollar and upward pressure on precious metals which coincidentally half of most of our banks tend to short for whatever reason they you know they think it's a, a great idea to short silver so much and and maybe maybe it's part of you know keeping our financial system you know put together properly but now that 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 train may be um coming to an end soon uh as a whole new set of buyers comes in on gold and silver to you know to back their currency because i'm sure they want to print too but now they'll have to um buy gold and silver if this is a true um, situation. So got all this news out there. And of course we have CPI next week and man, I'll tell you what if CPI comes in, you know, um, you know, um, you know, lot, you know, light, you know, not, not hot, but you know, cool. Well, the market's going to go crazy high. So it's like, you don't know what's going to happen. So you can't guess these things. So all we know is like what we have here and, you know, so so again, the SPY is in three waves down in the W wave, and now we're in this uh, connector wave that has, uh, you know, really exceeded all expectations, but it could still go much higher. It can even break this all-time high uh, and go, you know, 520 even uh, before the sequence is finished and why uh, like this. Now, could this be an absolute low, uh, a bear, you know, a the bear market bottom and we're going into a wave three because don't get get me wrong this is not a, a wave five it's going to probably be a wave three of some kind because this is um too too um was too severe of a correction um on the on the technology side maybe not on the spy and dow but the technology um if we go to the quarterly uh you had a massive reset of the stochastics here that you hadn't seen since um you know really january 09 so Technology is telling you it, it, that the market is in a wave two of some kind. It's not a wave four. So anyone that's trying to tell you this market's a wave four, go into a wave five, they're gonna they're gonna um, leave the market too soon. Uh, so then the question is, well, if it's a wave three, perhaps it's um, truncated because it's just so bullish. Because that's what wave threes do. So that would be um, part of uh, that characteristic. But my guess is, you know. You have this this move that I show here, but could it could it be over? If it is, like I said, it's a wave three, and what we'd want to see here coming out of this wave three is um, gains like we've never seen before that seem stupid, silly, and with very little to no pullback. And and you know maybe in tech we started seeing that a little bit. Now we're getting some pullback now, but but we're still I think below all time highs, so we're not we're not in that point yet. But you want to start seeing that kind of stupid, silly stuff with your gap, where you almost are like you know we're talking you know gapping up you know three four percent, and we haven't got that anywhere near that. But I be I do think when I look at this. 
you know, I have to I have to think about potentially the bear market is over here. And then uh, this is just such an unorthodox bottom that was truncated because the bid is so strong in the market that it defied all the other um, all the other uh, uh, um, patterns that we've always seen that have been so predictable, which would have pushed us down to 300 and we didn't get there. So the only thing I can think of is I don't want to be too bearish to market. I don't want to be too, um, I don't want to be punch drunk bullish either. I don't want to just go buy willy nilly, but I want to buy things that have uh, pullbacks that make sense and then, and then let the market decide to stop me out. And right now I wouldn't really worry about the bear market being over until the weekly. Uh, I mean, it, I wouldn't really worry about this leg ending until I see the weekly RSI break uh, this channel here, right here. So as long as we're really above this this line I'm just drawn on the weekly, the market should still push higher. Uh, it's not um, anything to be feared, uh, any of these pullbacks yet. But once once one of these uh, breaks, then I would be more uh, concerned. Um, the Dow's pretty weak, right? The Dow's uh, not been behaving. So we keep an eye on that. Now, if the Dow were to break this weekly, uh, that would be a, a, a very... Uh, interesting sign and it would also uh, allow me to think that uh, then th this could could rapidly fall so I think the Dow is the one to watch for if you're a bear the Dow the Dow it could be your way of conquering uh, and bringing this uh, next wave lower uh, but as you can see right now it's in this uh, setup that is coming to a climax at some point Something's got to give. Something's got to give. Now, everyone, you know, is happy we were going down yesterday. And I do think, you know, this could this could break this low and still be bullish. Now, this is that long term trend line. And this will probably coincide with that weekly RSI trend line. So if we lose that, then then I think you've got a situation where you have your th your three waves down or you have. A connector that's already fit that's finished here you know you could put it here even we would look at it but then I think you would be ready to say that hey it's time to um, it's time to uh, reassess uh, things now we saw interest rates rising but I think that's a fake out uh, a fake out on rates and, and then we'll go back down and go higher again later so I show you this here I do believe you have three, three, and then we'll come back down and then we'll come up. And when we come up out of this, that's the, that's that lake lower in the market, that final capitulation wave. Uh, the other, the other alternative is this two um, comes back much lower and the market goes bull crazy and it's a bull market all over again. And we do break new highs, but this would be like a blow off top. This would be the moon boy scenario that everything melts up and it's just good old days here again and then and then but then at some point wave three comes and the crash happens so this so the problem the the the, the bulls have is you have five up here which means you are going to take another swing higher the the we are going to go higher we should see these unthinkable levels in the two-year rate at nine and ten percent but until until this uh, consolidation is finished we don't know I do think that's too quick. It's just, it's just too, it's it, to me, a second wave should be a little more complicated, more complex in time, uh, in depth. And I, I really like to see it come back to three. And I do believe if this happens, the markets will be supported. Tech will pump, continue, and, and everything else will be, you know, growth would go and this will allow the Russell to, you know, some of those growth stocks in the Russell to get going again. This will be uh, a great thing and people, you know, will, will be very happy. And then and then I do think when this when this finally at some point finishes, probably with inflation rearing its head again, uh, then then it's uh, game over for the markets of some kind. Uh, I can't see the markets pumping while interest rates are eight, nine percent. I just can't see that. Uh, it, the only time I've ever seen that happen is this hyperinflation, uh, and that means you know, uh, the you know we we have these high interest rates, unthinkable rates, but then everything's melting up as the currency's uh, falling apart, and you have hyperinflation. 
So if the equity markets do, let's say if the equity markets do pull, a moon, like start the moon, crypto moons, but the dollars collapse, like I would be worried we're going into a like hyperinflationary period the United States has never seen before. And we don't have, it's uncharted territory for everyone. Um, um, but right now I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, but I do think it's uh, this move down uh, is coming and that should help support the markets and technology. Uh, and, and, you know, the TLT is the same thing. It's a connector. It could, it could still come back uh, and retest 2.5. And it wouldn't surprise me to do that. Now, the thing about the TLT is it it's only have three up. So this, this until the peak is taken out, you don't have a fifth wave. So you really need a fifth wave, and then you're going to consolidate. So even if we make another high, I don't think it's going to go that high so I think the long end looks a little bit different and then when I look at it if we can push a little bit higher perhaps we could finish this fifth wave and then just have a, a, ma a massive reversal and then the, and then here we're already starting to get that reversal so that's kind of what I'm thinking and then the T you know and then and then when this finishes then yes we'll have a whole new swing higher so to me Seeing this fifth wave, seeing what I see in the two year tells me we are we're already in uncharted territory. We're going to see later in this decade rates that are um, just people just aren't going to be able to come process. Uh, and, but what what effect it has on the market? Unknown. It could be if it's the 1970s, we know commodities, moon, gold, moon, silver, moons, dollar goes down. Crypto wasn't around then, but they'll pro probably moon as well. And, you know, energy will, will pump and everything, you know, related to commodities will pump. And, and the indices will go sideways and violent, choppy action. March, you know, they'll either make new lows or the March, you know, the, 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 the um, October lows get tested. But, but I mean, th this, is, this is that. Now, if this is a hyperinflationary spike, then the markets could all moon. Everything could just melt up and moon. And, and then uh, we're in a massive crisis that we've never seen before. Uh, we've never seen. And the only things we have comparable are, you know, third world economies that, that have done, that have gone, you know, gone too far with the money printed and nobody wants their currency anymore. And um, and so we don't know. Uh, so so we are in uncharted territory. When Whenever this happens, it's uncharted. I can't, like, I'm not gonna be able to tell you the, the, the correlation, but I do think short term, we st I still want to see deeper. I wanted I wanted to see that we never got it. I do think, it, it, you know, they, we get this 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 too, and that would support this mar the markets and technology, continuing to go higher, uh, for eventually a peak, and then and then and then we should pull back against this, and um, then take these lows out and get a real bottom uh, capitulation low. In, in, a, in a really scary flat correction, you know, of some kind like this, you know, something like that, and the end of bear market, which this would be in a, your your generational buy, uh, when, when, whenever this happens. So that's that's kind of what I'm thinking. What the rates are telling me, the hyperinflationary outcome is it just everything melts up because. The dollars essentially collapse and, and everything's priced in dollars and we could see the start you know if you look at venezuela's stock market it went parabolic as it uh, hyperinflated and of course you know argentina same thing they all do that and then then of course their interest rates skyrocket um trying to keep up with it and it's not able to so um don't know so that's why i always say you know, bulls also need to be careful what they want because you may get this moon boy scenario. But again, what is good is it going to do if everything's three, four times the price? You can't really buy anything with your money um, unless you're unless you're you know buying um, what's running. And, and I do think uh, the things to buy or um, gold, you know, the, the 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 metals, commodities, metal, you know, that type of thing. Um, that's probably what I would want to buy. And then some of these other uh, tech stocks act like commodities. They essentially behave as if a commodity, they, pr they have such price and power, they, they just can pass that on. So I do think some of the tech companies are commoditized and may run just like the commodities do. 
even you know so I, I don't know so but short term the Dow to me is just it's a it's coming to the end of the line here but I believe if we saw what happened in tech and the SPY all these it all came out of their consolidation I think this will do the same thing it's going to come out of the consolidation the question is where how high does it come out of it if it if it's only able to really come to this area you don't get a good pop then it's definitely set up for a 1987 crash this fall if you get a run to new highs with massive separation gap and run then you're looking at an expanded flat uh, a scenario an expanded flat scenario uh, would be somewhere around 39,000 uh, 40 probably 40,000 and then and then a dramatic uh, collapse back below lows to 25,000 uh, and, and maybe even lower uh, so we don't know but I do think this is gonna break um, higher uh, what would negate it is this uh, downtrend line the weekly downtrend line and uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, but there's a lot of um, signs that this this is um, this is still gonna go higher before lower so you have five up so this this sequence here you have five down now so we could uh, capitulate more on Monday and Tuesday and finish or if it's uh, finished here I mean you could call it a flat I mean it, it didn't it's not perfect but you could still call it an ABC um, potentially like a flat but whatever it is it's still uh, correct and it could still go lower and then the SPY uh, if I look at the count again just from the bottom I'm just doing pure counts uh, the corrective count of course will end at three this is the three you want to see it end at. you don't want to see this four or five um, it looks like we're in this four wave and and it could it could come back to 431 432 uh, so it actually has an opportunity uh, to break this low at 437 and be a viable dip a dip buy so this is a dip buy like it was on uh, Thursday something like that and then and then we finish up with five and then of course the surprise would be if we erase divergence and we can take out on the um, four hour and more importantly the daily this peak then you've got a three of three this is be a one two one two you get three of three which should take you to all-time highs consolidate pop up and then crash later so that's kind of what I'm looking for uh, the other like I said could it and could this be the bear market low it would be very unorthodox it would be something we've never seen before at least I haven't the way we bottomed uh, and uh, it would mean the character of the market is very different and uh, the only thing I could think that's never happened before is some kind of hyperinflationary scenario so I think the only thing that I could see that would negate this that would say oh no it's going to the moon and we're going you know to SPY 1000 or whatever Tommy Lee's saying is we got inflation is going to get way out of hands like we like the dot we're going to be in a massive currency crisis that 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 is what 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 to me there's no way we're going to hit a three and everything's going to be hunky dory so I think I think if we saw a three play out and we hit 765 I, I just don't I think it's um there, there it's it's not um it's abnormal like the behavior of the market isn't 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 what what I would have expected and that tells me the nature of what's happening is probably something that's never happened before and which means what has never happened in the United we never had hyperinflationary scare in the United States ever yeah the 70s was bad inflation but we're talking hyperinflate we're talking you know inflation going back to 10 15 20 percent that type of inflation um and, and what are we going to do what are you going to do if the currency is dropping you know four or five percent every day like you don't know like that is going to create uh the conditions of massive 
massive panic, but in a different way. So be ready, be ready, you know, be ready. But I do think um, the ideal situation is, like I said, we come up here, we top out and we crash. Again, inflation gets a little bit out of hand. The feds do a Paul Volcker, a real Paul Volcker. The, you know, rates are double digits and bam, it, it, everybody panics. And then, oh shit, the economy, you know, everything's in deflation and then it just, it's it. So, I, and, then, and then it's like game over, let's start again. And then we can. So that's, that's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see the moon boy. But the, because the moon boy tells me uh, I don't want to actually probably be in the indices. I probably want to be in like a commodity if it does this moon boy, you know, something like that. So if, the, if this happens, being in the indices would be a mistake. It would be you need to be in something that's going to outperform the indices or hold your value of your money because I, I, I almost am certain it would have to be some kind of inflationary crisis um, where 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 it where the indices are not um, selling off because the Fed has been now considered not able to solve it or lost control and then and then people panic. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. But anyway, so short term trade in, I think it's by the dip. Until proven otherwise, the Dow it looks like is the first stock that that could show that this could be over, and I can always change the count to end this at any moment, right? I could still put X here, but there's no reason to worry about that until we get that confirmation. Until some of these trend lines break, there's no reason to. But anyway, uh, then technology is uh, kind of the same thing. Again, this is the final swing. It looks like it's in five, some kind of five, and then and then it then again it's decision time. It should peak and crash, or if it pulls out another four and five, then it's got options. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I believe this is another too. This is it's a buyable dip. It's another, you know, it's just buyable dip. It's not, and and this this is probably the low right here. And what happened on Friday was just this wave too. It's probably something like that. Now if we break if we break that, it's again a, like I said a buyable dip, and I'll just buy the dip on that. here so that's the dip the IWM was actually green uh, and I believe it's in um, a consolidation area almost looks like Robin Hood's chart it's just like lagging Robin Hood right and then and then it comes out and I believe we'll be up here and we're and so we should see a big move in small caps a big move in small caps is coming So that's why I want to be heavy in small caps right now. Now, the um, the other risk is uh, we, we start to break down, but I wouldn't worry until this this trend line breaks that I have here. So again, if it if it does decide to come lower, it's just another buyable dip. These are just buyable dips, and in, in but the overall market direction should still be higher. So then um, the other things to keep in mind, Hong Seng. This is important for market structure. It really wants to hold this. It's, you know, I think it's um, probably going to bounce. Um, it's, uh, it's the next trading session. If it, it really needs to come out of this, this is nice three waves. We want to come out. This should support the market. If it breaks down, that's, an, that's definitely a warning sign. A warning sign. If this breaks, uh, that may be the, you know, like I say, the, our early warning indicator. Um, but it hasn't yet. So until it does, I'm not worrying about it. Then oil uh, is, is just so, again, so can, people are so confused what to do. I'm still looking for this pump and then crash later, right? That's what I want to see, the pump and crash. And that's the theme, the markets, pump and crash. Gold, 
Um, you know, this fifth wave needs could be done. At, you know, like I said, this fifth wave could be done here. It, it seems too short. It seems like it should it should push a little bit higher and then finish for this two, which again supports pump and crash. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. But again, it's Bible dip in this um, in this area. I I don't think it's going to get there. Uh, I do think you know that correction's over. So it's a connector. So the new the new target, if it were to um break this low, which I don't think it's going to, I think it's gonna fool a lot of people. Again, a lot of the um a lot of guys on Twitter is like, oh, it's going so low and yeah, I, I don't think so. I just especially if the rates are gonna drop again. If if the rates do, but 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 again, if it does, this is the new area to buy. So just uh we'll see. And then this um silver Again, I like this too, but it can it could still dip to to below uh, twenty. But it's a, it's all buyable. It's to me, it's a buyable dip. We should see silver over thirty dollars at some point. And if this is a secular low and a run in flat, if this is a run in flat low, and this was on one of the bullish alternatives, then we should see forty eight, fifty, eventually sixty, uh, uh, and and um. And then, of course, unthinkable prices, you know, 120. And then uh, I think ultimately uh, finish it at 300. Uh, some some cra you know, crazy, crazy ass uh, pump. So, again, is that selling me high, some kind of massive inflationary events about to happen? Maybe. Maybe that's what it's telling me. Uh, I don't know. I'm just reading the chart now. For right now, though, I would see long-term hold diamond hands i like the metals i want to buy them if they go lower fine buy more but i've got a bigger picture in mind of where where it's going because i mean in all honesty if silver were to come back down to these levels to retest this it's just it's just it's just gonna be so much buy buying opportunity uh, not gas people were were trying to trade that uh is buy in this area the reason i didn't like to pull the trigger on it was boil uh, was not in a good area to buy it, but it but it could be um, a on uh, next trading session. Uh, I want to see it here at four fifty six thirty. You have this gap. If we could fill that gap at fifty four, that's even better. That would be a good opportunity for a trade, uh, because you have five, and like I've mentioned, if you have five, you usually have another five, uh, unless it's a flat. And uh, let's take a look. Uh, Let's see here. C, B, A. Yeah. So I think you still. So if you're long, you gotta be careful with it because it could still be a fl uh, a flat, and, and it would be real a really uh, evil uh, uh, correction. Imagine that being a flat, and then you break this and low. So, uh, what would I look for? I would look for a quit. You know. Not, I don't want to see it come down to the 40s, anywhere like that. I want to see, you know, a good bounce out of it. Uh, and, then, and then what, what I'd be hoping to see is this, this uh, again, inverse head and shoulders play out. And, and we should get up about 100 bucks, probably maybe even 120. That, then, then we'll see. But I think this is um, a good trade idea coming up. I think buying it right now could be a little bit too early and, and but I would um but if I could get confirmation this cycle's over and which which obviously it's got a lot a lot of work, lot it's got a lot to do once once I can get confirmation the cycle's done then I could also I would I'd probably um just market buy it so right now it's not buy, it's not good it's not good entry so I wouldn't buy it, so I didn't. But I am keeping my eye on it um, for trade, for trading. Uh, the dollar index massive drop, probably the brick news is what I think is doing it. And if that's the knee-jerk reaction, then perhaps that's the narrative that pushes um, this 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 uh, inflationary scare. Uh, for all we know, so we'll see. Um, 
and the VIX, of course, was red. Uh, so a lot of people were like, well, you know, the other day, what, what was I seeing? Well, if you look at this, these, the VIX on the weekly, um, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, yeah, actually, probably the daily would be better. So if you see this peak here, so you've got this daily peak, and you got this peak here, and peak, and then you have these massive, you know, multi, this is multi-month, this was a couple months. So I'm looking at these peaks. And so we, we went from basically zero to six, you know, we, we, we had this big bump up here. And what I'm looking for is if the daily can get up to here, then you've got a major cycle low. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now look at the four hour. You see here, this is a major cycle low, boom, over here, and here's another one, and, look, and the 4-hour almost almost broke even that. So there was so much fear on the 4-hour time frame, but this created, let's see, May 24th, June 22nd, it created one month of gains, July 6, August 6, could this be the same thing, another month of gains? So there was so much fear in such a short period of time, it may take um, a month for it to unwind, to reset for, for another another wave. But what the daily is telling me is it could still um, go higher. So that supports the 4 or 5 scenario, right, that I have here. Right. Is four or five, right? You get this four and five. You, so you still go higher for another month, and then and then uh, then you get you get the waterfall sell off that that everyone wants and it, and is expecting, and then you come out of this wedge and the VIX, and you come out, and then you probably more than likely break this at least come back to 44, 48. This is kind of what I'm thinking at the moment for the VIX. But I would say the daily to me is telling me that's a tremor. What we saw, but it's not the main event yet. The main event is coming. So this, this should probably pull back and then we'll get this. And we'll probably take out all those peaks, possibly even that peak on the daily you know we'll get up we'll get up to here again that's what we we'll want to see that's what's probably where we're, where we're heading so uh, that's what I'm thinking uh, the other thing interested on the VIX if you look at the um, the monthly I was looking at this you broke a trend line that really goes back to 05 if I broke it so is the VIX like we've never seen the VIX trade down here in the RSI. I always thought that was interesting. Wonder why? I don't know why, but it. But look, that's a massive break. So what about the uh, quarterly, right? What about the quarterly? Where are we at with the quarterly? Well, let's see. Um, something to keep an eye on, right? But it. But then if I draw the trend line like this. You got another break and it could just keep going so I don't know I think I think the VIX is behaving in a way we've never seen before in our lifetime and I think a lot of people would agree with that so the market is showing characteristics that are just not we've not seen before that has not been seen so I think you have to respect the idea that perhaps some of the fundamentals driving it are, 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 are things that we've never seen before, such as, like I said, like a hyperinflationary backdrop, um, a new currency being introduced to the world market. I don't know. But there is something, um, you know, really structurally uh, 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 happening underneath the hood of this market that's very different um, right now than we've ever seen. So that's why you got to keep all possibilities open even the unthinkable and I posted the hyperinflationary thing before and people are like oh stupid never happened 
it's never going to happen. It can't happen. And one thing I know about trading is things happen that no one thinks ever is going to happen. I mean, the day when Bitcoin was a thousand, no one would have said it's going eighteen thousand, or now it's sixty thousand. No one, that, like all these things happen, you know. All these things, you know, stocks go high. You know, Tilray went to like three hundred dollars. You know, these th thing, things that seem unthinkable uh, can happen. Unthinkable things happen all the time. History is full of things that um, people thought could never happen, and they happen. So I think if you're just like from the mindset that it. Um, it's just too hard to believe the United States could have a hyperinflation. I think I think your 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 um, belief system is going to be um, challenged because I think what I'm seeing, based on what I see, I'm seeing uh, um, uh, an inflation. We're about to get an inflationary period. And either the the the, the Fed's going to lose control through maybe no fault of their own. Uh, and and then all hell will break loose in the markets and then um, in a way that in a dynamic that no one's ever seen or they get control and the markets crash and wave why and the market's predictable and every everything happens and and life goes on so I think that's a, that's a scenario we, we got in front of us all right so anyway so the markets like I said I think it's just a buy to dip market I'll do a live stream and we can go into other stocks later, but I do think for right now, there's. I want to see the market go higher. I really want to see the Dow and Russell finish this pump, finish this, get up here. I want that and I want the Russell up here. Then let's talk about a crash. And I want I want to see us in more, more later in the summer, right? I want to see it more later in the summer, fall. That's what I want to see, you know. And I want to see Bitcoin at forty-five thousand. Like I want to see Bitcoin up here, right? I want to see Bitcoin. Up, like, like I just, I just think it's too soon. I just think it's not time, not time yet. It's it, and, and the dollar, it's. I don't think the markets could really crash with the dollar dropping like this. Some sectors may obviously are going to go down, but not all of them. And to get a crash, you need all of them, but you, and you need risk off, risk off, and that's dollar higher. So I don't, I don't think this is going to support a cra a market crash. But what do I know? Anyway, so that's how I trade it. I think it's I think it's higher, and then and then you then if the Fed can get back in control of inflation, then I do think this drops, and, and we get this. And if they lose control, then it's uh, moon boy. But don't go to the store because you may not be able to buy anything. But you'll have a big bank account of of maybe uh, you know fiat currency that's worth you know thirty to forty percent less than what it's worth right now. But hell, it'll feel good because you know we'll, we'll be you know up here. So I think I think that's that's the scenarios. So I think that's the two scenarios. And um, I think as time goes on, I'm leaning toward the hyperinflationary scenario. Uh, or the mega inflation, whatever you want to call it, just based on everything I'm seeing. And now we have a narrative. We have a narrative. BRICS, gold-backed currency, that will severely weaken uh, fiat currencies, especially the dollar. It's going to weaken those currencies. They're going to go down because of that. If, they, if you have these large nations that are backed by commodities and those global economies, and they're all going to go into a gold-backed currency, no... People are going to leave the dollar. They're not going to use the dollar. The dollar is going to go down in value rapidly. And that's what happened yesterday. And I believe that if this actually happens, I mean, it's um, it's an economic, you know, uh, catastrophe potentially for the United States. Uh, and I don't know what they can do about it. Um, the only solution would be to either raise rates rapidly to get people to go back into the dollar or back, have their currency backed by something themselves, a basket of something, uh, you know. And the, of course, they can't, they can't go back to a gold standard currency, but they would have to do something to prop it up. They won't be able to monetize it because people, because now you have another, another uh, a dynamic in the global financial system that um, people can use that's considered sound money 
and uh, and we'll see. But I think that narrative should scare the shit out of people right now, and and that and if you think that's not a big deal, you're like living under a rock. You need to research if these brick nations and really follow through and go through with a whole new currency, gold backed, is going to be a massive um, impact on the dollar and the dollar is going to go down and everything priced in dollars is going to go up and the demand for gold and silver is going to go really high uh, that's what's going to happen so get ready for it um, we're in interesting times and we'll see uh, see where the world is um, in another six to twelve months but uh, I do think a big move is coming and uh, we'll see if we get this Y wave if we don't well then it's a, 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 a probably a dollar breakdown uh, that will cause cause this uh, with some with 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 some um, really really bad inflation. That's what I'm thinking. All right, guys, that's my update. Uh, I'll do a live stream later. I'll talk to you later.